I've spent the last two decades of my life in the world of finance and money. First at a career at the University of Melbourne, followed by further specialisation into mortgage broking. My name's Edwina Dixon and this is my channel. And one of the most useful skills that you can learn that will change your life forever is your ability to be able to manage and save money. In this video, I'm going to show you the lessons that I've learned on how to best manage my personal finances so that you can break free of any bad money habits that you might have. And I'm also going to tell you the one big regret that I actually have when it comes to my personal finances so you don't have to make that same mistake. Number one is all about having a buffer. Now, over the last few years, as we've had COVID and the pandemic and we've had lockdowns and all of that, actually being able to go into a big financial crisis like that or like the GFC back in 2008 with a buffer means that you're going to approach the situation very differently. You're going to mentally feel less stressed because you know that you have more options, you have more flexibility. Now, a buffer is just a bank account. Maybe it might be in the share market if you're a little bit more open to risks and volatility. But at the same time, it's liquid funds that you have available to you if for any reason something happens, there's some kind of financial crisis, you actually have access to funds very quickly. It means that from your point of view, you get to make the decision. You've got the choice. And that's really important when it comes to any form of financial crisis, whether it is going through something like the pandemic or going through something like the GFC that we saw in 2008. The next one is bad debt. Now, bad debt really looks at if you're unable to control your credit cards and your credit card spending, that means paying off your credit card in full every single month also looks at things like a car loan or a personal loan. These things are called bad debts. If you're using buy now, pay later facilities, they're also considered bad debts. Now, where these become a real issue and why I really try to avoid using these things is because you end up paying a lot more for them. There's big fees attached to them. Um, you're paying a lot in interest. And as you can see here, in Australia, the average credit card limit is quite high. It's higher than any type of interest that you're going to get if you were to invest that money elsewhere. So why not put that money elsewhere and not actually be handing it over to credit card companies or car loan companies or personal loan companies. Next up, we've got knowing what your income and your spending actually is. And this ties back into having a buffer and bad debts. Often people don't know what their actual income is or how much they're actually spending. So here's my challenge to you. Next time you get paid, I want you to actually look at your pay slip. Does it actually say that your gross income, that's how much you get paid before taxes and deductions, is that the figure that you thought you were getting paid? The thing is what you're spending your money on. So for me, I'm married, I have three kids, we have a lot of expenses, but at the same time, I love drinking coffee. And so knowing actually how much money we have to spend keeping in mind that we want to put money away for uh, our buffer, but also for family holidays and to be able to do fun things with the kids, to be able to go on adventures. And those things often cost money. So it does come down to what is it that you're spending your money on in the day to day that you could adjust or change so that you can actually make your dollars stretch further and you're more intentional with what you're spending your money on. Now, I said at the start of this video that I had one really big regret and it's, I do. <laughs> I really wish that 
when I first started investing back when I was 23, that I actually just started earlier than that. Because even by then, I could have started earlier and I chose not to. But now I'm sitting here going more time in the market, I would be further ahead of where I am now. And I think the probably the perfect example of this is Warren Buffett, you know, he has billions of dollars saved. And the reality is he started investing when he was 10. He's in his 90s now. Of course, he has a lot of money because he's been in the market for a really long time. And that isn't just shares, it's properties, it's businesses, you know, it's all of the other avenues to make funds and to make money that is actually what's helping to build his wealth. No doubt we're going to touch on this in a later video at a later stage. But thank you for joining me. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the flip side.